Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we see the next counter that is the 3 bit asynchronous up counter. The 2 bit we've seen in the previous video. Alright. This is the clock pulse. You know it. So I've drawn this just to save me a little time. Alright. Now for 3 bit, you know, with 3 bit, the maximum number that we can represent is 1, 1, 1, which is the decimal equivalent of 7. Alright, so which means that this counter will be counting from 0 to 7, alright? So now, now for 3 bits, you know, we, for each bit we need one flip-flop, so for 3 bits we need 3 flip-flops. So let me draw those 3 flip-flops, alright? This is, let's say, the first, this is the second, and this is the third. Now we know that only toggling is required, so I can use T flip-flop instead of the JK flip-flop. All right, this is T, this is T. Now, let, the, the output of the first is, let's say, QA. The second is QB. And the third is QC. All right, an external clock pulse, which is here in the green color. So, this is uh, given to the, to the first flip-flop. All right. Now, all, the, all the, 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 the inputs, the T inputs, are given a logic 1. For the toggling operation, all right. This is a high state given to them. Fine. Now, what do you do? The output of the first flip flop adds as as a clock pulse to the next flip flop, and the output of the second flip flop acts as a clock pulse to the third flip flop. And the outputs are what? This is the output. This is Q B. This is QA, and we have QC, let's say, with the green color. This is QC, fine. Now, in this case, QC is the most significant bit, all right? QC is the most significant bit, and QA is the least significant bit, all right? Now we draw them, okay? We draw them with the clock pulses. So let's say first is QA, okay? So QA is here. Initially, let's suppose, let's suppose, now we have the clock pulses over here. So it will be working on the negative edges, all right? So let me show you the negative edges, all right? Okay. Now, initially, let's say QA was zero, all right? So the first, when the first negative edge arrives, it will toggle and will get high and will remain high till the next falling edge. Then on the falling edge, we will toggle again and we'll stay low till the next falling edge. On the falling edge, it will toggle again and we'll stay high till the next falling edge. And this process now repeats. On the falling edge, it toggles, all right? On the falling edge, it toggles. And that's it. That's the graph for QA. Now, this QA is acting as a clock pulse to the second flip-flop that is the B flip-flop so which means we draw the output QB with the help of the falling edges of QA all right so this is the falling edge this is the falling edge this is the falling edge and this one so now it's again negative edge triggered it will be working on the negative edge initially let's say it is zero all right so then the negative edge it will trick it will it will toggle it will go high and it will stay high till the next negative edge arrives. Now on this negative edge it will toggle and will come to zero till the next falling edge it will go to zero and then on this falling edge now it will toggle again go to high state and will stay high till the next falling edge and that is the phenomena goes on with the clock pulses. Now the final QC so this QC now depends on QB because QB has been provided as a clock pulse to this C flip-flop. So now it's again negative edge triggered. It will depend on the value uh, on this negative edges now. It will operate on these negative edges. Fine. So initially, let's say if it was zero, so it will be zero till the first negative edge has arrived. It will toggle at this position. It will stay high till the second falling edge arrives. Now this is the first falling edge for this flip-flop and this process now goes on and on like this. 
all right now is that clear now let's say we draw the the the, the what the truth table for it so we have the clock pulse uh, don't have space here clock pulse you have QC QB and QA fine yes it's fine okay now initially let's say I say it initially so initially this is the initial condition when the clock is zero before the first falling edge has arrived before that what was the value of QA, QP and QC? They were all in the low state. Zero, zero, zero. Now when this first falling edge arrives, what happens? When the second falling edge arrives, what happens? So we see it over here, okay? First falling edge, second falling edge, okay? Similarly, third falling edge, fourth falling edge, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth nine and so on now when the first falling edge arrives so have a look qa has changed to one and qb and qc are zero zeros so this would be a zero zero one now when the second falling edge arrives qa has changed to zero qb has changed to one and qc is in the zero state when this third falling edge arrives, or if we're talking about the external clock's falling edges, all right? So when the third falling edge arrives, QA goes back to one, QB is at the one position, and QC is still low. Well, when the fourth falling edge arrives, so QA goes low again, QB goes low, and at this state, QA, QC goes high. Now, when the fifth falling edge arrives, so uh, this Q, 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 A goes high, Q, B is still low, Q, C is still high. For the sixth falling edge, Q, A goes low, Q, A goes low, Q, B goes high, and Q, C is still high. For the seventh falling edge, QA goes high, QB is still high, and QC is still high. For the 8th falling age, QA goes low, QB goes low, QC goes low, which means we have reached the initial state back, and now that is not our concern. So the, we have reached the maximum count at the previous state, which means at the 7th falling age, we have reached our goal that is the maximum count of what of seven which is one 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 okay so I shouldn't have removed it but uh, I'm sorry for that so I, I draw it a little again fine now so this is what this is not a three bit asynchronous up counter all right, now what are the number of states in this particular counter? So this one, let's say the decimal equivalent for zero, all right? This is for one, this is for two, this one for three, this one for four, five, six, and seven, all right? This is the decimal equivalent. Now if you see, so we have a total, total are what? Total are from zero to seven, all right? Total from zero to seven which makes them a total of eight states which is equal to eight states all right so we have total of eight states which can be represented as which can be represented as uh, as what uh, two to the power three is equal to eight right and I can generalize it as two to the power n all right total uh, number of states is 2 to the power n all right where this n is what 
n is the number of flip flops and the number of flip flops depends on what it depends on the number of bits the number of bits all right and the maximum count the formula the generalized for maximum count is what maximum count that a counter can do is what 2 to the power n minus 1 as in this case you can see it can count to 7 so that's about it that's all about the three bit addition from the sub counter see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah till then take care goodbye